watch this video series to learn how to build a 12 volt power box with parallel battery, voltmeter, USB charging, 12 volt outlet, and remote control lighting, as well as a horn. I'm going to show you how to build a power box with remote controlled lighting. By the way, that's all the stuff that's needed to build this thing. No list. Might want to screenshot that. Step one, I've lined up this uh, wall plate and I'm using it as a template. Notice how I've kind of just aligned the edge for my template to the top here and then kind of to that side right there. And then I just did the same on both sides, mark the circles, and then we're going to drill them out with a step drill bit. You'll notice that the step drill actually goes all the way through. This is a one and one eighth step drill. So you get quite a few chips, but once you punch that step drill all the way through, you're able to just easily put in all your little devices on here. They fit just perfectly. So next we'll put the nut on the other side and one more note to add, start with the center holes first because you could have a problem with uh, this breaking right here. It gets a little bit thinner and I would not recommend using a hole saw because as it breaks through it could shatter it. The next step is to put all the lock nuts on because that's where the spacing actually comes in really important. You want to make sure that before you ever cut your holes that that nut wouldn't interfere with the sides or the bottom edge. So spacing is super important. Make sure they're all centered. So the switch is used to switch the positive leg only, which means it needs to be put in series with the red line. If you look inside here, you notice there's three pins and one of them that one in particular, I put black on it. That's because that's a negative that has to go back to the negative. So this LED will light it has nothing to do with the switch. The middle one and the lower one are for switching. And I'll show you that with the meter here in just a sec. So now I've got my multimeter. My red one is on the middle peg on the switch. And the black one is in that top left one. And we're checking for continuity. I've got the meter set up. See that little beeper symbol on the meter. It's that little sound, and if the two wires touch, that little uh, symbol right there um, just means it will beep. It means you have continuity. So right now I'm on the middle pin and that top pin. I'm going to push the button, and you can hear that it's beeping, and I'll push, switch the button back, and that way you can tell that you have continuity, and those are the two pegs we'll use to turn power on and off to the ports over here. This wire is 16 AWG, it says so right on it. So I've got a 16 uh, AWG to 22 connector, and we'll end up putting it right on. It also has a heat shrink wrap, and you can see how tiny that hole is. But it fits this piece of wire just perfectly. Whoop, you gotta get it in the hole. I've got one hand on the video, so I'll go ahead and crimp it, but I wanna show you the crimping tool that I'm using. This thing's really nice. I got the Wi-Fi and it's all set to pre-crimp so it's color coded so you put it up in that pink one and just pull down and it ratchets. So now I've got the wire positioned in there and I've got the little connector on there. I'll just crimp it down. You can see it just makes a perfect little connection every time especially look at the little dimple on it. And of course these are uh, these also have heat shrink on them. So you can take a lighter to it and shrink that tube right down. I'm in the process of attaching the SAE uh, wire harness socket. Notice that that's what's also hooked to my battery. So my battery, I've got SAE on it. And then of course over here is the harness with a fuse in it. So if you look down in here, um, these two are not hooked to anything. So anything I hook to this will have constant power and anything that um, is hooked to this will come just like the rest of these. They'll only come on if this switch is turned on. 
So I have one more wire to add to the switch. That little pink wire that we put in here is on the middle peg. And um, I've of course attached the negative so there's one more peg up in there, you can't really see it. And that peg ultimately has to be hooked to this wire. And that way I can switch power on and off to all these devices so that the LED lights are not a constant drain on the battery. So I'm going to make a couple of cables so that I can get all of this hooked up and I've just got some of this uh, two strand uh, red and black, it's 14 AWG and you might want to get yourself a little trimmer like this because the way they work is they'll actually grab on and then the cutter will pull and strip it all at the same time. So let me show you what that looks like here. They're pretty handy. I'd say that's the best cutter or style that I really liked. It also has this little cutter built in down in here. So I can just cut stuff off short. Notice that secondary one that's down in this area. Anyways, that's how I get all my cables. So I'm gonna build some cables so that I can hook up, you know, this device and multiple devices up to our our power here. So I've got my power delivery harness done. Notice how the plug has the black and the red and I've just hooked up multiple connectors and pigtail them all together. And the same with the ne negative, it's just got a black and red um, conductor on there. And what we'll end up doing is these two will be charge control. I'm gonna take one of these positives because I need to feed a solid positive into that third position down on that switch to feed power into it so it, when it turns on it can pigtail the power to all of these. I just plugged in the SAE connector from the battery and finished wiring up the switch. Notice how the positive coming in from the SAE socket comes right into the power on that far side on the right hand side of that switch and then this red is pigtailed to the rest of those. Um, that little extra one back here is just an extra one from the factory for an extra device to be plugged into for when it, for when it switches on. Then all the common negatives came back to this side which also powers up the, um, the little LED on the switch and I've hooked it into that harness I made that comes all the way back up to the negative side. You can see on the SAE socket right there. Okay, so that's all it is, and now we should be able to turn this on, and now we're powered up. Now we are ready to charge a phone and run a device from a little 12-volt battery. Now that I've got the harness all situated, and these are going to be for the charge controller. That's the two leads that are directly to the SE, and then everything else is pigtailed. So I have my negatives, extra positives, and then of course this blue is a switched positive. Well... This device right here is a relay control and it's what works off of the key fob. So I bought this model here and then there's a couple different ways to wire it. Currently I'm wired in this configuration where all these black lines hook together and the instructions were pretty much quite clear. You basically push the little button on here until the red light turns off and then you push one of the buttons on the key fob and now that button is trained in order to operate it and all those instructions are over here on the back side so this little relay control works really well I'll demo demonstrate that here in just a sec so I'm going to give you a little demo I've got the battery pack hooked up to this and I've got a switch so I can turn it on and off you can see the light turning on in there and then right here that'll turn a light on for me and of course the B will turn the horn on just in case you have an animal around or you want to scare somebody. Anyways, I think that the relay setup works pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. So that's switching this 12 volt supply on. And then what I've done is I've also added an extra pigtail so that I can attach a ground cable. And I'll need to go in and add... I believe one more ground over here to my main ground and that way I can parallel it with the battery 
So if I unplug the SAE from the battery, I can still use this as a flashlight and I guess technically charge the phone batteries, but I haven't done the calculations to see how long it would take to transfer all this energy into a cell phone. So I've taken the liberty to drill a couple more holes. Just kind of put them on center and made sure when I push these through, they're not going to hit our other stuff. Now if you look at this light, these just kind of, you have to push on them kind of hard, but they'll just kind of snap into place and they'll seal up. And these grommets have a little bit of a groove. So once you drill your hole, they'll just kind of push in there and just kind of fold them and squish them until they get into place. That didn't go in very good, but it's because I'm doing it one-handed. Anyways, they're not too bad to put in. And then after that, you just press that light into place. So we're getting closer on that box. I'm just about to put this box in. I'm just going to show you. So there's batteries. And this battery pack is 12 volts. So there's parallel to my positive of my battery. And there's a negative. So those need to be hooked back up to what the SAE harness. And then if you come over here, I've got LED negative. And I've got LED positive. And LED positive, I have two different outputs. I can go off of this one or the that blue ended one, red and black. And then this right here is just the negative harness. So that's where the white wires will hook into. Anyways, try to make that as clean as I can and then I'll tuck it down underneath all those wires and show that to you. So everything is set up and working now. I'm running just off of my little 12 volt battery pack you can see the lights on and the switch is on and we can actually control our relay and then now you'll see that the battery's on and I can turn the charger on just to show that they're wired up in parallel and I'll go ahead and leave it on I'll plug this SAE adapter into the side and now I've just put both of my battery packs in parallel and you'll notice I can turn this one off and he'll turn off turn that one off and I can turn them on independently with or without the battery or have them both on so all that really happens is once the battery is hooked up he's just wired positive off the positive negative off the negative this little cell stacks the battery so it makes a 12 volt stack so anyways, um, it's not going to blow up by doing that. I'll have to do some math, I guess, to figure out um, how much it, it's going to wipe this little pack out. or I'll just have to do some evaluation there. But the nice thing is I can plug in a 12-volt battery, and I can run this whole system, and then I can unplug it from that and walk away and still have regular batteries to run the lights.